All right, what are we doing next? Well, hopefully we're not gonna make too big of a mess. So here's what we got going down. We're gonna service the transmission hydraulic system on this bad boy, my 2515H. Um, here's what we got for oil. Meets and exceeds what the factory recommends. Bought it at Tractor Supply. Um, here's what it cost and what it was. So almost 300 bucks for that. Stay tuned because we're going to be doing the front end as well, doing the full 50-hour service here. So what my crazy game plan here is, is I have five of these. There's another one underneath. I figure they're over a gallon a piece. I'm hoping what I can do is fill a bunch of them up. Well, I'm going to open the drain plug underneath. <clears throat> You'll see it right here, the yellow one, big yellow guy, crescent wrench, cracked it loose. It wasn't very tight. So what I'm hoping I can do, because I don't, there's no way I can fit a five or 10 gallon pan under that thing, is it'll come, hoping it'll come out slow enough if I leave the plugs in up top here, that I can cycle through them, dump them, get the bucket back in the rotation, and cycle through fast enough that it doesn't overflow them, you know what I'm saying? Um, it may work, it may just be a complete utter failure, but we're gonna try it. So whatever, if nothing else, I can at least fill five, put the plug back in, fill the other five and be good, because I believe it's 9.7 gallons is what they claim. So what I'm gonna do is put the clean oil into here, well clean, the used oil into here, then once I'm done, I will be pouring it back into those um, to save or burn in a smudge pot or find somebody that just needs some hydraulic oil for whatever, right? So, all right, let's roll the dice. Also, do not forget, you're gonna need filters. So, the transmission and hydraulic system filters here. Got them from my local dealer. They were not cheap either. I think they're 20, 30 bucks a piece, something like that, if I remember right. Um, got my slip here. So here shows the filters. All right, here goes nothing. <laughs> this works out as planned. If not, it's going to be quite interesting. This is the only plug I found in the system. I guess we'll see how fast it comes out. That'll, that'll be the telltale of what's going to happen here. This might not work at all. Fortunately, it's not too big of a hole, but there is 10 gallons pushing on it, right? Boy, that's a long sucker. Oh boy, yeah, I don't know. Well, I can kind of see. Well, it is a magnetic plug, which is cool. I can see it filling up the bucket. This might work, guys. This might work. Where are we at here? Once we get up to the line, I'm gonna switch the next bucket in. Can you guys see that? I hope you guys can see it. There's the line. Switch to the next one. A little mess, not bad. Get the next bucket in line. Go around and pull that other bucket out. Oh yeah, that's gonna work great. Just a little mess on the bucket changes. But that's not a big deal. plenty of time to dump it as I need to here. So here we're getting close. I mean, it's going to make a little mess, but what do you do? Okay, there we're at the line. And for the next bucket. There we go. So I'm going to run out here and dump, dump that bucket real quick. Get the next one ready.
Okay, well, the little manual thing here. Now, granted, this is 3015. I mean, it should be the same. This is the same tractor. You see one. Mine doesn't have that second plug. Okay, well, that part is pretty much drained out. I looked in the manual and everything, and there's supposed to be another plug on the front side of that transmission, but mine doesn't have it. So, shoot. But here's how the magnetic drain plug looked. A little bit of fur on there, but nothing I would say out of the ordinary. So I'll clean that off and put that back in, and then I gotta do some research and see where the missing plug is. I wonder, I don't know, kind of weird. Nice, slimy. Nice and clean. Go ahead and put that back in. Come on, baby. Find your home. really good clean off my hands get my wrench now again this was not super tight um, so I'm just gonna snug her up really good here and call it good clean it off one more time and be on the hunt for that other drain plug. Okay, looking down here, it's supposed to be right there, according to the manual. I can't find it. Also, just to show you how dirty that oil is, it's pretty dirty. One thing to check in the services and periodically is loose bolts and stuff. If you look right here, one of the ones for the tow bar, or whatever you want to call it, the hitch, is definitely not tight. So, definitely you want to check that. And then also, I lowered the three-point bars a little bit, and I'm going to pull that drain plug out again and see if any more oil comes out. Because I'm a long ways off from the nine gallons that's supposed to be in this machine. And doing some research, it appears they do not have the second plug. If someone has ever found that, let me know, but it's definitely not where the manual says. So something to keep in mind if you're looking for it like I am. Whenever you put on new filters, you should put some oil in them. Um, we'll see how this goes because I'm probably gonna make a mess trying to pour a five gallon drum into here, but it is what it is. First gotta get this open. Okay, well, maybe if I elevate them off the ground, it'll be a little easier. Eh, let's give it a shot, what the heck. I think if I pour this upside down, I think we'll do okay. Right, in theory. Here it comes. Next. And while we're emptying the other ones, this can uh, drain in and fill those in. Wipe the bucket off. That worked out better than I thought. All right, good deal. Now let's go take the uh, old filters off. All right, so on the right side of your tractor underneath is your filters. Here's one, and then there's a second one there, that big white guy. So I'm gonna start with that white one first, get it out of the way, or the big one I mean. That way I'm not reaching across this one after it's been leaking and get dirty. So let's do that next.
Okay, let's get the new filter and put that on. Okay, just as tight as you can get it by hand, and that's good. Always don't forget to uh, put oil on the O-ring. Okay, let's move on to the other filter. Okay, other filter here. We'll slide our bucket over, get our wrench on it, and loosen it up. And we'll grab our new filter. And you always want to make sure you get oil on this O-ring, right? So it takes some of the oil, smear it around here, get it on there good, and put her in place. Again, you don't need to beef it on tight with a wrench, just like changing the oil in your car or tractor. Just get her snug by hand like that, and you're done. Clean that up. Probably let it sit a little bit and let the rest of the oil come out around it and then clean it up again so that way after we fire it up and drive it around we'll know if there's any leaks so next step final step is adding fluid back into the transmission so you got your two plugs here this one has your dipstick on it which i checked before i emptied it this one is supposed to be your fill and it was tight i could not move it by hand i got a huge nifix on there and it seemed like it was going to break it but it didn't and it did finally come loose. So that does unscrew, in case you're not sure. That's what I assumed. Again, that's why I'm making this video, guys, is because there's just, there's no info out there on how to do this stuff. So people will tell you, but they don't give you the details and the tips like I do. I don't know, if you guys got any better ideas, let me know. I've got this kind of longer, stretchy funnel. Um, it still doesn't have the biggest hole at the bottom end, which I'm not overly excited about, but I am not sure what else to do. So, this is what we're gonna do. Let me grab my oil and we'll get pouring. Half tempted to pour it into a smaller bucket and go from there. To be honest with you. If I get just the right pour, it keeps going. So, I'll be back once I finally get all this in there. So it's gonna take a while. Okay, well I got almost this whole bucket in there, but we're at the point now where I just can't get enough angle on the bucket to get anything else in there. I'm trying to get you guys situated so you can see what's going on. I got, got the funnel kind of wedged in there, but in order to get anything more out of the bucket, oh, yeah, I can't. So once I start tipping it more, it's gonna come farther back. So. I'm gonna have to open the other fresh bucket and start pouring some of that one in there. All right, so I filled it so when the dipstick is not screwed in, it's at the top of the full mark. So that's where we're gonna stop. And now it says in the book to run it for a while, I think 10, 15 minutes, and then check it again. So that's what we're gonna do next. I filled it to that point, uh, mainly because when we run it, we got two filters to fill back up with fluid, you know, so those are going to take some juice and uh, it wasn't so high that it's going to be that big of a deal because those fluid two filters are going to take quite a bit so okay we got that on tight got that on tight we'll clean up our mess and we'll fire it up okay what we're going to do next is check for leaks make sure nothing's dripping out and then we're going to fire it up for a bit here it says here to run the engine for a moment and activate hydraulic thing. So we'll run the bucket up and down, three point up and down, that kind of stuff. Um, and it says to wait 10 or 15 minutes before checking the oil level. So kind of weird, but it must take some time for it all to kind of get back into there. And uh, here's the one straight out of the manual. It says, after changing, run the engine to deliver oil to each part and then stop the engine and check the oil level again. So it doesn't say to wait that long in here. So I don't know. I think if you're at the full mark or close to it, you're probably good anyway. But let's do that next. Make sure, first, we're going to make sure there's no leaks. And then we'll start it up and make sure there's no leaks. All right, second cycle on the glow plugs. We'll show you how mine starts up cold. Give it a second here. Here's how mine starts. She's a twofer. Now, granted, it's 
fairly cold out and I have not plugged it in. Sorry, the iPhone quit there just as it was doing its magic, but now I'm gonna run the hydraulics up and down, make sure everything works, and then we'll shut it off, let it rest for a few and check how everything is going. Pretty slow on there. Make sure my valve is good. Yep, the valve is all the way open. Must be getting too many videos in here. This thing keeps shutting off mid video. Slow going down, no, nothing on it. Normal, I guess. Comes up good though. That's how we like to see it deal. Anything leaking? A little bit from that one, but I think it just needs to be wiped off. Nothing else underneath. Okay, let's go ahead and check the fluid level again. Wipe it off. Do you know, are you supposed to check them with it screwed down or not? Where are we at? Just barely on the dipstick, so I'm going to have to add a fair bit more. All right, add a little more. She is definitely full. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go drive it around the yard a little bit. And then for the third part of this series, I'm doing a 50 hour on this, is the front end oil. So I'm going to turn that front oil front end oil up a little bit, maybe warm it up a little bit driving around the yard and then we'll pull it in. And then I'm going to do a double check on how this is, make sure there's no leaks, clean up my mess underneath the tracker, and then we'll do the front end oil. So stay tuned for that. Like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links down below in the description. And we'll catch you on the next video.